Yeah. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King! One Husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. When you get up in the morning, there's nothing like a breakfast you really go for. Like, for instance, delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. These giant ready-to-serve grains of wheat or rice are premium grains. They're shot from guns, puffed to perfection, exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice shot from guns is good for you, too. Makes a thrifty deluxe family breakfast. Tomorrow morning, start the new year off with a bang. Enjoy this breakfast treat, Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Frank Weaver and his young wife Amy had staked a small claim on the Bonanza Creek a few miles from Dawson City. Frank had worked hard at his claim, but as time went on and the winter approached, he became more and more discouraged. He had persuaded Amy to come to Dawson from Seattle, taking the small bank account they had to make the trip and to pay expenses until the claim began to pay off. But so far, the money had dwindled and the take from the claim had been extremely little. One evening at supper, after Frank had put in a hard day working the claim, Amy tried to encourage him. Winter is setting in fast, Amy. I thought by this time I'd have struck enough pay dirt to carry us over. We'll get through somehow, Frank. Oh, I'm sure that before long you'll make a strike. We've been telling ourselves that for several months, honey. But I'm beginning to think this claim just isn't any good. Now, don't think that. Others near here have made their claims pay. And sooner or later, I know you'll make this one pay. Uh, have some more soup, dear? Oh, thanks. Yes, I'm not very hungry. Anyway, we've had that same warmed-over soup for the past two days. Oh, what's the use of fooling ourselves? I was a fool to bring you up here. Use what little money we had to do it. Don't talk that way, Frank. After all, my place is with you, no matter where it might be. Yeah, but you don't seem to understand, honey. We've run out of money. Food is high. With the winter breaking Frank, up... Frank, perhaps we could get credit at the trading post to carry us until the claim does pay off. Yeah, I thought of that, but we're not very well known. And they know I haven't been getting much of anything from the claim here. It wouldn't hurt to ask, anyway. Why don't you take the dog team right now and go into Dawson to the trading post? Well, if they should give me credit and I couldn't pay later, we'd lose a dog team. And the claim, too. You've got to face it, dear. We certainly can't keep the dogs if we can't feed them. Or ourselves. It's a chance we'll have to take. And then hope for the best. Well, all right, honey. I'll go to the trading post and see what I can do. If they won't give me credit... Well, I guess the only other thing will be to try to sell what we have and get back to Seattle somehow. Frank hitched up the dog team and set out for town. Later that evening, he stopped in front of the trading post. Oh! Oh, there! Frank stood for a moment, hesitating. He could see several men standing around the big stove inside as he gazed through the window. Well, here goes. If I don't get credit, we're sunk. What can I do for you? I, well, um, I want to get quite a lot of supplies. Sure, sure. Now, if you just give me your list, I'll get them together for you in a jiffy. But, but first, uh, well, I can't pay right now. If you'd trust me until my claim pays off better... Huh. I... So that's it. But you'll get your money just as soon as the claim now, pays Now, look, lad, it isn't that I'm hard-hearted or anything like that, mind you. 
But the first year of the rush, I got took for plenty by Chichacos who promised to pay me off when they made a strike. Having myself to think of, too, I've made it a policy not to stake anyone who doesn't have a paying claim. Look, uh, my name's Frank Weaver. My wife and I have claim 20 up on Bonanza. We have a dog team and a sled and a cabin up there. If you could see your way clear in our case, Sure, just... and I know where number 20 is located. It's one of them secondary claims back off the creek on the hillside. That's right. Nary I... a one of them claims there have paid off, my lad. Sorry as I am to say it. It'd be better for you to cash in for the little you'd get on your dog team and cabin right now and save yourself a lot of grief. But winter's setting in, and we couldn't get out of the territory even if we wanted to, especially if I sold the dog team. Sure, and a good many will find themselves in the same predicament, Weaver. Well, I feel sure if you let me have the supplies, I'll make that claim pay off. Sorry, my lad, but I just can't do it. Tis several useless cabins on bad claims I have on my hands already for unpaid accounts. Now, if a bit of grub to last you the day would two would help, I'll let you have it. Welcome. I'm not asking for charity. Just forget the whole thing, mister. I'll find a way to get the supplies I want, one way or another. With discouragement in his heart and his mind torn with frustration and unreasonable anger, Frank left the trading post and approached his dog team. That's no use. For a few minutes, Frank stood near his sled dreading to start back home with the disheartening news. As he stood there, undecided what to do, a heavy-set man came out of the trading post. Hello, Weaver. What? My name's Jeff Steele. Hi. How do you know my name? I don't remember meeting you before, Steele. <laughs> well, you haven't met before. I uh, happened to overhear you talking to Mike Quinn, the storekeeper. Oh, and from what I heard, I figure things are kind of tough for you right now, aren't they? That's right. Well, if you think you'd be interested in making some cash, maybe I can help you do it. Well, just what would I have to do to get the cash you mentioned? Well, I'd like to hire you and your dog team for a few hours tonight, that's all, but I'll pay you well for it. Mm -hmm. What do you want to hire me and the dog team for? Well, there's a friend of mine over in that cafe. I, I want you to take him and me a few miles up Wolf Creek a little later tonight. We have some business up there with an old prospector friend of ours. What do you say? Well, it's late. Well, it doesn't make any difference. We'll pay you $50 to take us there and back. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> Good. Uh, meet us in front of the cafe in about, oh, half hour. I'll see you then. Shortly after Frank and Steele separated in front of the trading post, Sergeant Preston and his dog, King, came up the street and entered. Morning, King. <laughs> You haven't been around the post for two weeks, or No, Mike. King and I just got in from Selkirk. I find I'm out of coffee, so I dropped over to get some. Coffee it is, Sergeant. Yeah. Yeah. You sure that's all for now? That's all I can think of, Mike. My uh, credit's still good? That it is for anything <laughs> in the place. Say, sure, just a short while ago, a lad came in asking for credit through the winter. Huh? Sorry I was to have to turn him down. Anyone I know? Well, that I can't say. His name was... Uh, let me see. Yeah. Oh, yes, Weaver. Weaver, he said it was. Frank Weaver had a claim up on the Bonanza, one of them hillside claims that never seemed to pay off. I remember a young fellow and his wife who have a claim up there. Seems to me that was his name. Like as not, it's the same chap. Dark, nice looking. Said him and his wife have number 20 claim. Yes, that is the same fellow. Well, my conscience has been bothering me since he left. Poor lad, he was that upset, he went out and slammed the door behind him. Let's see? He said they were out of money, but he still seemed sure he'd make a go of it if they could get through the winter. Sure, and he looked so desperate when he left, saying he'd get supplies one way or another. It set me to thinking that it did. Well, it must be very hard, Ed. Yeah, that's what I think. Uh, do you think you'll be heading out that trail any time soon, Sergeant? Why, Mike? Well, now, if you do, stop by and tell Weaver I've changed my mind. Oh? To come on in and get the supplies he needs on credit. The look on his face will haunt me all winter if I don't give him the credit he asked for. I'm glad you changed your mind, Mike. I promise you won't lose by it. King and I will go up there in the morning and give them the news. Good. That'll be a relief to me, mind. I'm sure it'll be a relief to them, too. Good night, Mike. Good night. Come on, King. Oh, 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 oh. Meantime, Jeff Steele had entered the cafe and sat talking to a short, stocky man. Yeah, I've got a perfect setup for pulling that job you spoke of earlier, Shorty. 
That is, if it'll be worthwhile, like you said. Ah, uh, look, like I told you, I happen to know that old prospector Jim Nason up on Wolf Creek has got plenty of gold right there in his cabin. I heard him boasting about it in here today. Yeah, it ought to be worth going after then. Yeah, it would be. How do we make a getaway without a dog team, Jess? We try to buy one, people know we must be fixing to leave Dawson. <laughs> Don't worry, I have that all fixed. Oh, yeah? How? Hey, look, a newcomer, Chichaco, named Weaver, was in a trading post a short time ago trying to get credit. He was turned down and got upset. As he went out, he said he'd get supplies one way or another. Well? I followed him out and made a deal for him to take us up Wolf Creek with his dog team and sled. Told him we'd pay him $50 if he'd go tonight. $50? <laughs> Don't worry. He's dope enough to think we're going up to see a friend on business. You'll have a surprise coming when we get out there. <laughs> Come on. He's going to meet us out front, and it's just about time. Yeah, but if that fellow Weaver finds out what we're going there for, Jesse... I've got everything planned out so you don't have to worry about a thing. Now, come on, let's get going. Jess Steele and his friend Shorty left the cafe and found Frank Weaver waiting outside with his dog team as he had promised. The three men set out along the well-beaten Wolf Creek Trail. The cold, gusty wind swirled the light, dry top snow in white, dusty clouds behind them as they moved along, obliterating any tracks they might have made. Sometime later, they stopped before a remote cabin. Oh! Oh, there! Oh. Well, Weaver, this is a place... Uh, our business is rather private, so I wonder if you'd mind waiting outside for about five or ten minutes. Why, I guess I can stand it. If you're sure you won't be any longer than that. Oh, we won't. Don't worry. Uh, come on, Shorty. Let's get inside and get this over with. All right. Frank watched as the two men went to the cabin and entered without knocking. For a few minutes, he heard nothing but the wind. Then his attention was attracted by the voice of an old man raised in fear and protest inside the cabin. What? What's that? A moment later, Frank was startled by the sound of a muffled shot. That shot was inside the cabin. I better go see what happened. As Frank reached the door, it suddenly opened. Steel on, barred his way. But not before he saw a sight inside that gripped him with sudden fear. Get back to the sled, Weaver. Hey, that old man lying on the floor. You shot him. That's right, we did. Now, get back to the sled and make it fast. Uh, what is this, anyhow? Do like this says, or you might get a bullet, too. Now, get going. Put the sack of gold dust on the blanket on the sled, Shorty. Sure. You're right on the sled. I'll follow along behind this Chichaco and have my gun handy. Hey, now I get it. You took that prospector's gold and then murdered him. You're getting a little smarter now, Weaver. Now start the dog team and continue straight ahead. But, but that's going away from Dawson. I have to get back. My place is on Bonanza Creek. Don't be stupid. You're not going back. We're heading for Selkirk and you're going with us. <laughs> After the threats you made in the trading post to get supplies one way or another, they'll blame you for what happened when you turn up missing. <laughs> now get going. <laughs> We'll continue our story in just a moment. Say, fellas and girls, it won't be long now. I mean, until the new year 1949 is here. I am here. Huh? Great Scott. Where did you come from? Well, I guess I shouldn't really be here yet. Why, you're a baby. Gosh, you haven't got any clothes on. That is hardly. I mean, except for that big ribbon you're wearing. See what it says on it? Sure do. It says 1949. That's right. That's who I am. Oh, so you're the new baby New Year. Right. Well, you're a bit early, aren't you? Roughly by about some six and three-quarter hours. <laughs> I was just checking up. Oh. On New Year's resolution. Made any? Me? Oh, you bet. And I was about to tell all the fellas and girls about a resolution everyone ought to make. What's that? It's to eat a good, nourishing breakfast every morning the year around. Oh, that's a swell idea. And so easy to keep, too. Especially if you include big heaping bowlfuls of swell-tasting Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and topped with fruit. Sounds good. Mmm, it is. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, these king-size premium grains are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. And what's more important... Both delicious kinds furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. You mean they're good for you? You bet. 
And for variety, you can eat Quaker Puff wheat one day, Quaker Puff rice the next. Boy, I can hardly wait. 1949 is going to see me trying them. And fellas and girls, don't you be missing out. In 1949, eat Quaker Puff rice and Quaker Puff wheat. The ready-to-serve breakfast cereal shot from gun. Ask Mom to start the new year off with a breakfast treat that can't be beat. Get next to those big red and blue packages of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. After killing an old prospector and stealing his gold... Jess Steele and Shorty forced Frank Weaver to take his dog sled and go with them toward Selkirk. Early the following morning, Sergeant Preston took King and went as he had promised to deliver Mike's message to the Weavers. He stopped at their cabin. Searching the stars! Good morning, Mrs. Weaver. You're Sergeant Preston. That's right. Oh, I know you've come to tell me something has happened to Frank. Police, Sergeant, is he... Well, just a minute, Mrs. Weaver. I came here to see your husband to bring him a message from the trading post. But Frank isn't here. He didn't come home last night. I'm so worried. I've been almost out of my mind. I, I'm sure he's all right, Mrs. Weaver. He was a bit upset, I understand, because Mike Quinn at the trading post refused him credit. Oh, but... Poor Frank. That was his last but hope. But Mike changed his mind. I came to tell you and Frank that you can have all the credit you want. Oh, thank heaven. But Frank, where can he be? Oh, don't worry. I'll try to find him. Perhaps you'd better get your wraps and come to town with me. You could wait at the trading post until I do find him. Yes, I couldn't stand waiting here any longer. I'll get my things and be with you in a few minutes, Sergeant. Do come in. Thanks. Monkey. I won't be a minute. Let me help you with your parka. Oh, thank you. We we ran entirely out of money and supplies. Oh. Well, Frank was so terribly upset about it all. And so I heard. When you get to town, Mrs. Quinn will give you breakfast, and then when Frank's found, you and he can get supplies and bring them out here. Oh, Mrs. Weaver, uh, may I have something of your husband's, a glove or something like that? Well, yes, of course. Uh, oh, here's a glove of his. But well, just in case you... I have to trail Frank, King can get the scent from this glove. Now, we'd better get started. Come along, fella. <laughs> You'll be warm enough under the blankets on the sled. Here, let me help you. You're so very kind. Thank you. Now, try not to worry. I'm sure everything will be all right. Up front, King. Up front, King. Sergeant Preston took Amy Weaver to the trading post and left her with Mrs. Quinn. Then, leaving his dog team outside... He and King went through town making inquiries about Frank Weaver, but learned nothing. Finally, Preston stopped in at the constable's office. Hello, Sergeant. Hi there, King. Good morning, Jim. Do you happen to know a young fellow named Weaver has claimed 20 up on Bonanza? Oh, I've seen him once or twice, Sergeant. Why? He came to the trading post last night, and he was refused credit. Mike says he looked desperate, and as he went out, said he'd get supplies one way or another. He didn't get home last night. Oh, that's not so good, is it? No, it isn't, Jim. I'm worried about him. His wife's quite upset, too. They seem like a fine couple. Frank isn't the sort to do anything out of the way, but when a man's desperate... Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Can't figure out where he might have gone, Jim. He... Oh, I just thought of something. What? He was at the trading post last night, and he probably left his dog team out front. I have one of his gloves. King can get the scent from that. And we can go to the trading post and see if King can pick up Weaver's trail. Say, that's a good idea. I'll come along with you. I'd like to see King in action. All right, glad to have you. Let's go, Jim. One, King. A short time later, Preston and the constable stood in front of the trading post. Preston held out Frank's glove for King to sniff. Then he spoke a command. Find him, King. Find him, fella. As the two Mounties watched, King put his nose to the frozen ground and circled around, trying to find a scent that was similar to the one on the glove. The intelligent dog seemed to know what was expected of him, and he moved in an ever-widening circle. Then suddenly he barked eagerly, ran a short distance, then stopped and looked back, still barking. He's found Weaver's trail, Jim. Well, what do you know? After him, fella. Find him, King. On King! On! King headed up the main street. Reaching the cafe, he circled a few times, then started in the direction of the Wolf Creek Trail. Preston and the constable hurriedly followed King with the dog team and finally approached the old prospector's cabin. King had stopped there in seeming puzzlement. 
Then, as the two men came along with the sled, the great dog turned toward the cabin and sniffed at the door. Oh, 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 oh. Things started past this cabin at first, but now he's sniffing at the door. Yeah. What do you make of that? Well, I'd say that Weaver went on up the trail, but that he stopped here at this cabin first. I'll go in and ask about him. Come on. Doesn't seem to be anyone inside, sir. We'll take a look anyhow. Jim, look there on the floor. What? This is an old prospect named Nason. He was said to have quite a bit of gold here in this cabin. <laughs> done for, all right. Shot through the heart. Jim, I... Well, this is something I hadn't even thought of. That Frank Weaver would commit a crime, no matter how desperate he became. He did it, all right. But we can't prove it until we catch him and make him talk. I feel sorry for his wife. A terrific blow to her. Yeah, I... I guess it will at that. Look, Jim, you better go back to town, take my dog team and sled, and carry back Nason's body. All right, Sergeant. I'll, but... uh, don't say anything to anyone about our suspecting Frank Weaver. He and I will follow his trail until we get him and bring him back. Come on, fella. All during the night and most of the following morning, Steele and Shorty forced Frank Weaver to mush steadily over the frozen trail that led to Selkirk. Frank carried no gun, and he racked his brain to think of a way out of his predicament. But the two killers were constantly on the alert, and one or the other was always behind him with a gun ready for instant use. Finally, they reached a deserted cabin on the side of the trail and stopped to warm up and rest. It was late afternoon when they made preparations to hit the trail again. Good thing we found that dried venison someone had cached in here, Shorty. We'll take what's left of it along with us. Yeah, we'll need it before we reach Selkirk. Look, look, Steele. You've got this far. Why not take my dog team and let me make my way back alone? My wife's there waiting for me. By the time I get back to Dawson, you can be far away. (laughs) Hey, you hear that, Shorty? Weaver wants us to let him go back and tell the Mountie what he knows. <laughs> yeah, that's a hot one, Jess. But all you have is that small supply of dried venison. It won't be enough for the two of you, much less for three. Selkirk's still a long way from here. What's more, the dogs will need some food, too, or they'll give out. Hey, something to what you say, all right. And you won't make me go on with you? No, I guess we won't. What's come over you, Jess? The Mountie's will be looking for Weaver when they find that prospector. But if he gets back to telling the truth... Who we said he have... was going to get back? I'm not that crazy. But you just said I you... said I decided not to take you along with us. In other words, dead men tell no tales, Weaver. Oh, now I get what you mean, Jess. Yes. Look, look, let me go. I promise not to say a word. Think of my wife. You can think of her till Shorty gets a venison ready to pack on a sled. After that, you won't do any thinking. Or talking. I'll take the venison out of the sled right now. Oh, look, look. If you shoot me, it'll be cold-blooded murder. I don't carry a gun. Save your wine until Shorty gets back inside. He'll enjoy it. Hey, Jess, hold it. Somebody coming along the trail. Looks like a Mountie to me. A Mountie? We'll have to do some fast thinking. Shorty, when he gets here, you answer the door, see what he says. I'll stand back here and have the gun pointed right at the door. If he comes in, I'll let him have it. All right. It's too bad we only got one gun between us. One's enough, don't worry. Now, Weaver, stand over there to one side so he won't see you when Shorty opens the door away. Get over there. I, uh, all right. <laughs> now let him come on. we we'll leave two of them behind when we set out for Selkirk. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston, with King running just ahead of him, approached the cabin. He saw the dog team waiting out front. And taking his gun in his hand, he approached as he saw King sniff his way right to the door. I didn't expect to see a Mountie. You live here? I sure do. I suppose that's your dog team. Well, yeah. Just getting ready to go after more supplies. I'm looking for a young man by the name of Frank Weaver. Tall, rather dark. Have you seen him? No, I can't say I have. Nobody's been by here for several days. You lie, mister. Weaver did come by here and he entered this cabin. Now, if that's the way you feel about it... Why don't you come in and have a look? I think I will. Step aside. Look out, Sergeant. Get out, get him. No, you won't. Oh, no, get that Mountie. Even as Frank Weaver, jumping in front of Jess Steele's gun, took the first bullet intended for Preston, the great dog King, without waiting for a command, lunged forward. And as Steele raised his gun for another shot, grabbed the killer by the arm and dragged him to the floor. I'll get you, Molly! At the same moment, Shorty grabbed for Sergeant Preston's gun arm. But Preston, twisting aside, lashed out with a smashing blow to the door. No, you don't! 
Don't kill me. Get him away. Tom King, Go. easy, fella. What's some boy? They, they planned to kill you as you came in. Oh, my God. And they were going to kill me. You took the bullet meant for me, Weaver. I'll fix that up. Just hit your right shoulder. They, they killed an old prospector. Made me come with him. He lies. The whole thing was his idea. I'll take all three of you back to Dawson City. After we get there, I'm sure we can find out the truth about everything. Putting Frank on the sled, Preston handcuffed the other two together and started back to Dawson. The next afternoon, after a long session in the constable's office, Preston, with King and Frank, entered the trading post. Frank! Oh, Frank, is everything all right? Yes, yes, Amy. We finally got the truth from the two killers, Mrs. Weaver. I'm glad to say Frank's been exonerated. Thank heaven I knew he wasn't guilty. I felt sure of that, too, when he took the bullet intended for me. If he had been guilty, he wouldn't have done that. Sure, it was a mighty fine thing for him to do that, it was. Uh, did you tell him the news, Sergeant? What? Yes, yes, Mr. Quinney did. I feel sure I'll make good at the claim. I heard something else today that makes me think you will, my lad. Two claims right next to yours have struck it rich. What? Amy, did you hear that? <laughs> and with yours in the middle of both of them, you can be sure there's gold there. Oh, isn't it wonderful, Frank? It sure is. You know, King's best action at that cabin sure saved the day. You'd have had your hands full with the two of them, Sergeant. Well, he's certainly a wonderful dog. To think because of him, Sergeant Preston was able to trail you and reach you in time. Did you hear that, boy? <laughs> <laughs> that he does. Sitting there with his ears perked up and <laughs> sort of grinning like... King's happy all right, Mike. You see, he knows the case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's program. Well, sir, fellows and girls, tomorrow is the first day of a new year. And right here is someone who wants to say something to each and every one of you. Here is Sergeant Preston himself. And naturally, I don't have to tell you that King is here, too, right beside you. <laughs> fellows and girls, King and I want to wish you a happy new year. May the coming year be the finest, the happiest ever for you and your family. How about it, King? That's King's way of saying for the both of us, Happy New Year. And Sergeant Preston, that goes for me and all of us here. And for the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Yes, from all of us, a Happy New Year to one and all. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure... King takes over. This was one time I regretted having strong, fast dogs. You see, a couple of killers who broke out of jail stole my sled and dog team to make their getaway. This was a mighty thrilling chase. The speed of my own dogs almost spelled disaster for me. Be sure to hear this exciting story Monday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.